thank you. I like to thank my mom and my <laughs> brothers and sister and my and my uh, mentors and my uh, director for making put me in this role. Thank you so much. <laughs> you love me. And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world-famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? How y'all doing today? I am Chris. And I'm Christine. And welcome to the 16th episode of the Chris and Christine Show. Do, 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 do. Wow. Number 16. And yes, 16 is also a lucky number. <laughs> you know why it's a lucky number, actually? I don't know why. In California, as far as I still know, um, you get your driver's license at 16. Is that right? That's true. Yes, you do. Well, there you go. There you go. 16 is a lucky number for you. And we have other lucky numbers that we're going to talk about this episode because we hit some lucky numbers this week, didn't we, Chris? Ooh, yes, we yeah, we did, didn't we? Yeah, we definitely did. We want to celebrate with you, our super loyal listeners, for helping us achieve a really big milestone for the Chris and Christine show. Are you da, ready? Da, da, da. Are you ready for this, Chris? Y yeah, I'm born ready, baby. What you got? All right. So for the last couple of weeks, friends, we have been anticipating that we were going to approach this big milestone and we hit it and exceeded it this week. And that is to achieve a total of 2,000 listens across our podcast episodes. Really? 2,000? You know this. You I know. I'm just, I'm just playing it up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we hit over 2,000 listens across all of our podcast episodes. We are actually right now at 2,076 listens across wow. all 15 episodes. Fantastic. I know. And, and who would think that I thought we'd be lucky to get maybe, what, five or 10 listens, you know? Yeah. Wait a sec. Some high expectations there, babe. Well, you got to set it low. So you do go at, like <laughs> mediocre or at least a little no, high. Set well, high expectations and exceed them. Come on, goal well, setter. Yes. Yeah. But you got to think realistically here. And I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, our family would listen and things like that. But other people are listening too. And that's awesome. I love it. Thank you guys for listening. Thank all you guys for listening. Don't stop listening, by the way. You keep moving. We're going to plug one of these things out every week if we can. And we have so far stuck to yeah, it. And here we, we are. Definitely have and we've hit the finishing the four month mark and in that time four minutes months yeah what? <laughs> not four minutes four, four months. months you know what i mean <laughs> four months already yeah we have and get this chris i you know, know you helped me look this up but can you believe that we have had listeners across a total of 10 countries Wait, 10, 10 countries. I don't think I can even name off 10 countries. <laughs> <laughs> so, friends, thank you for everybody in the USA that has been a faithful listener. Also, our friends in Canada, Spain, Australia, the United Kingdom, Mexico, Norway, India, Hong Kong, and the Netherlands have all joined us on this journey in our first four Wow, months. our podcast has landed in every one of those countries. Yeah! That is fantastic. If you think about it, we are truly world famous. The world famous Chris and Christine show. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. This is kind of like surreal to think about. I you know? know. It's so exciting. We've been watching the numbers increase steadily over the last couple of months and just really staying true to ourselves and what we wanted with this podcast, which is just to have fun with it and to right. share Right. This journey. is like a fun hobby that we do. You know, we do this for you guys to have fun with it. And it's something that we do together. And I just thought of it out of the blue. Like, let's do a podcast. Cast. And um, I didn't know what we were going to do or how to even do this thing. You know, I kind of slapped it together and here we are. Well, you did more than slap it together. There's been a lot of research, everybody. Chris has been amazing. If you don't know this, he is our producer. He's the audio oh, engineer. Yep, yep, he does yep. all of the technical work. Yep. I help with... <laughs> I support him with content creation, but we do that together and I support with social media, but really he is the brains behind the whole operation. So Chris, Aww. this is all because of you. 
Oh, thank you. I would like to thank my mom and my <laughs> brothers and sister and my and my mentors and my uh, director for making put me in this role. Thank you so much. You love me. This is our own Chris and Christine show podcast awards. <laughs> we are the only winners. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, before we move on, I do want to also give a shout out to some of our top cities from across the four months. Ooh, of course. Are you ready for a shout out? Of course I am. Shout are you guys out. ready? Are you guys out there listening? Here you go. All right. So our top five cities were Los Angeles. Of course. They're big. San Francisco. Ooh, just as big. Clovis, California. I'm not know, know where that is, but it's just around Fresno, Central California. Okay. okay. El Cajon, which okay. is in our backyard. Right. San Diego. Okay. And that was our top five. Top five. But then some of our other top cities across the country included Rochester, Minnesota. Ooh. Kingsville, Texas. Okay. And West Lafayette, Indiana. Oh, we're kind of bouncing around a little bit. I know. Ooh, it's Check so exciting. Out. It is kind of exciting to know that we're kind of being played in these different little markets, you know? Yeah. It makes me wonder about the lives of our listeners. Like, I want to know more about them. We get emails from you all, but not everybody. And we'd love to know, like, what is it that keeps you listening? What is it that makes you laugh? So we definitely want you to reach out to us. And you can reach out to us on a number of different ways. And one of that is... One of those platforms is through social media, right, Chris? Right. Um, yeah, we do have our, our um, Instagram page and uh, Facebook, I believe, too. And also, you get a hold of us the old-fashioned way uh, via email. Right. You know. So we have lots of different ways you can reach out. And we definitely want to hear your stories because, as you heard last week when we were in episode 15, we had some fun interviews and we are looking for other interested people that would like to be part of our podcast through interviews. So if you have a cool hobby, if you have a, a unique interest, if you have something that you'd like to share more with us, reach out to us and let's chat. And you never know, you might just end up as a featured guest on a future episode. Yes, of the and being the, uh, you know, the producer of the show, I can put <laughs> that on. I'll take, set you guys all up. We'll figure it all out. Christine's pretty good at setting things up. I'm pretty good at uh, making sure all the gizmos work, you know, all the <laughs> buttons are pushed and the, the microphones are hot, as they say in the industry. <gasps> microphones are hot. <laughs> check, sound check. One, two. Yes. Yeah. Well, you've done a great job with that, Chris. And so friends, that are listening, reach out to us. We love to hear your stories and love to have you as part of the Chris and Christine show. Fantastic. And when we get back, we got a few hot topics like always, and we'll get into them right after this. The Chris and Christine show is available everywhere on Google play with Google podcast, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple podcasts, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. And now it's time for Hot Topics. Do, 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 do. Woohoo! Hot Topics. What you got today, baby? Actually, Chris is coming in hot with our first hot topic. And all I have to say is Baby Yoda. What? <laughs> <laughs> baby Yoda. You haven't even seen The Mandalorian. I haven't seen... What? DeLorean? Back to the Future? What are you talking about right now? Oh, gosh. What am I going to do with her? You know. what is? Tell me what that word is again. The Mandalorian. What it's is that? It's a new show on Disney+. Plus. No, it sounds like, like the Mandalay Bay in Vegas and like the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Well, that's probably where they came up with the name. I, I have no idea. Mandalorian. Well, crazy. Yeah. Oh, what'd you say? Excuse me? <laughs> What's your language? No, you know, we're talking tonight about um, this new streaming service called Disney Plus, named after this little small company, just a small little mom and pop company called <laughs> Disney. Yeah. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe not. I don't know. But they have this new streaming service called Disney Plus. It's the bomb.com. Yes, it is. Now, Disney Plus is not the first and it's not the only um, streaming service that you can uh, watch on your um on the interweb, on whatever device yep, you want to use. on the interwebs. <laughs> yes. So we're talking about streaming services and how a lot of people are actually cutting the cord 
and not um, using traditional cable and satellite providers. I do. I have a little bit of both. I don't have like all of the streaming services that are available because I there's ones I had no idea they don't even, they even exist. Right. Well, the conversation came up because Chris and I are talking about like who has what as we're looking at merging our lives together and like who has what accounts and I don't have traditional TV at my apartment. I don't have like cable or anything like that. I haven't since I moved to San Diego four years ago. But what I do have is a Roku streaming stick. Right. Like um, it's like a box that you can like get stuff on. It's like the gateway between you and the internet to get the streaming stuff. Right. I mean, I still have to pay for all of the little services on there like Netflix and Prime Video and other things that Chris is going to go over. But he has actual, like, is it called cable anymore? Um, yeah, there is a few different ways you can do it. Okay, tell me. Um, far as I know, you can go with um, the old-fashioned cable where the actual cable company runs a physical cable to your house. And I believe during through that one cable, I think my parents still do this, everything your internet and your tv and your everything runs through the same wire isn't that kind of old school i believe they still use coax cable for that but a lot of them now use a fiber optic or fancier wires and wow, stuff so that's you get like, the whoosh, i know one of your head talking about big numbers but that's how you get the <gasps> hd and Brat. The, no i meant like uh <laughs> you know 4ks and 8ks and whatever it is now is a key a thing? I don't I know. I like 14Ks and 24Ks that have yes. diamonds <laughs> set in them. That's the only case she knows is with Ks that go bling bling. Mm-hmm. But um, but there's, there's different ways you can do it. You can do that. You can pay for your internet. Regardless of um, if you cut the core, I mean, if you have TV or not, mm-hmm. and you just have regular internet, which you had, right? Just the plain internet? Yeah. I have regular internet. It's like... It's fast. It's I guess they just put fiber optics in the apartment, and so it's supposed to be fast. I don't know. Well, well, so you have a wa- physical wire somehow running to the house or running to the mm-hmm. building, yep. right? And then it goes to your your unit. So you physically have internet going to the house. And when you do the internet, is you um, so you don't actually have like a TV service. It's just internet only, right? Right. Yeah. So when I moved down here, I actually didn't have a TV for the whole first year. It was just a decision that I made as after my divorce and all of that. I just wanted to focus on journaling and like being present and all that. However, when I was gifted a TV from a friend... Ooh, a gift? I did get it. It was beautiful, big Sony Bravia TV. What? Yeah, a friend that was moving didn't want a TV, and she's like, do you want it? And I'm like, "Um, okay. But I didn't want to pay for cable service, and so I was like, well, what can I do to just get Netflix on my TV? And I heard about this cool thing called Roku Streaming, and so I went to Walmart and I bought it. Perfect. And you can actually use the remote and it's pretty easy, easy to do, I bet. You just like click, click and it's like right there. Yeah. You just have to set up your like your Netflix account. Well, you get this menu of different streaming apps you can connect to. Okay. But some of them are free that come with Roku. And then there's these other ones that charge. And that's where I didn't realize how expensive it could get. Right. Because you think people say, oh, I'm cutting the cord. I'm going to get rid of cable and I'm going to save all this money just doing the streaming. And that's the way a lot of people do when they go into it. But people... um, I hate to break it to you. If you were to um, get every streaming service that's on this list I have in front of me, it's like a car payment. I kid is it you not. Seriously? Oh, yes, it is. But there's um, only like two or three things, right? Like Netflix oh, and um, Prime. No, I'm looking at this list and I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to guess it's like 50. I don't what? know. What? Yeah, you can get no, out of here. I, yeah, I had no idea there was this many actual like different streaming service that you can subscribe to. I thought there was like Netflix and Prime and what Hulu and, and now they have Disney Plus, but I didn't know there's a bunch of ones I never heard of. So, do people actually like let go of their cable and just pay all these little mini subscriptions? Well, I guess it does. I actually do myself. I personally, let me tell you what my little setup here. It's not fancy, everybody. It's not flashy and dashy. What I got is I have DirecTV. 
satellite and I have like the basic package. So I get all the major networks and I get all like the major cable stuff, like the yep. TNT and the co- whatever and stuff. Hallmark Channel. Yeah, for Christine. I got Hallmark Countdown Down to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all our Christmas movies. And I got like, uh, what was it uh, AMC yep. and all that good stuff. And then I have. Um, uh, the internet comes through too on a separate line, mm-hmm. uh, fiber optic or whatever it's called. I don't know. It's got the internet package I got, high speed internet for the house, Wi Fi, all that fun stuff. Now, as far as streaming services go, I actually only have, let me see, uh, Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, I got like the Netflix that has the HD. It's not the basic one, there's one above, like the HD one. And then I also have um, Amazon Prime. I think it comes with my Amazon Prime um, delivery service. I believe you do get Amazon TV with it. Right, Prime Video. Yeah, but Mm -hmm. I hardly ever use it. And um, I think that's it. Oh, no, I got Disney Plus now. That's right. I just got the Disney Plus one. So that's all I have. And Chris is such a good fiance. He shares his Disney Plus with me. Of course. Thank you so much, babe. Oh, you're welcome, sweetie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so on my TV, I have... uh, I started out with just my Roku streaming stick, and I picked like 15 free channels. But then I synced up my Netflix account, which I share with my son. And then as... We got into it. There were shows on Hulu that he wanted access to. And he's like, Mom, can you do Hulu? And I was like, sure. So I did the free trial. And then I was like, okay, it's only like five or six bucks a month, whatever. So I signed up for that. And then uh, for a while, I had this Christian movie channel. It was called Pure Flix Media. Was it part of the Roku free package? No, I paid for that. And then I canceled it. Was that a separate subscription? Yeah, it was a separate subscription. But it was available on the pure flit or on the roku and then last christmas or maybe two christmases ago i heard that hallmark started to have a streaming app yes they did i don't have hallmark channel and i love the christmas movies and so at christmas time i signed up for it and lo and behold i forget over the next couple of months that i have it so i still end up paying for it oh yeah and then i pull it back up at this time of year and i'm like oh, <laughs> oh mark but then there's that and you know it just goes on and on amazon prime video i can link to that rent more movies and now right. and almost you- every i think almost every single one of these on this list here like once you mentioned i think you can watch them on every device right phone tablet computer and tv but now the thing is when i add all of that up for all of those streaming apps i think i'm paying like well, you would pay for seventy five dollars, maybe eighty dollars a month. I well, but that's way cheaper than you pay for well, cable. Well, when you used to have cable, how much did you actually pay? Do you remember? I don't know. That like, was like forever ago. But oh, what do on. you pay? Um. Well, not, I have a pretty good deal. I I think I have a pretty good deal. I think I must have got a like uh, promotional plan. Uh-huh. You know, they always hook you in with those promotional right. plans, and then mm-hmm. like after those expire, they like jack them up. You know, mm-hmm. I think I'm still under the under the uh, the threshold or whatever. I literally pay like. For four TVs, four cable boxes or whatever um, sat- for the dish to work on, mm-hmm. for each TV, the DVR, all that stuff, plus the internet, plus the Wi-Fi, plus the modems, plus all that stuff for my house, I think I pay like around $100. What? Like, like, I'm paying like 80 bucks just for my little four channels. Plus fifty bucks for internet, right? But this, I I'm got not, the but I'm, Hey, but I'm not including my streaming services. Oh, true, okay, true I'm story. just talking about like the the, the regular Direct TV mm-hmm. plus the internet services I have. I pay maybe a hundred dollars, you know, somewhere around there, one one ten, somewhere around there. But I'm on a promotional thing. I think if I didn't have that, it'd probably be more. But uh, that's what I that's what I pay. And I think if you get internet alone, it's like almost a hundred dollars when did tv get so complicated like there was a point where you could just like have regular tv or cable and now it's regular tv or cable or streaming services or all of these add-on packages like all these sports packages right well they do still do that when i got my direct tv they asked me which one uh, which packages did you want i said just give me the basic one or whatever I did that, but they do have better ones with like the sports packages or the movie packages or the HBO packages, and then it all kind of builds up. So I got like the basic. That's why my that's why I don't pay so much. My mine's pretty low. But here's the list of the actual all the streaming services that you can pay for that we found as of 2019. Here we go. Are you ready, Christine? 
Yes, I'm ready? ready. Okay, here we go. Okay, of course, Netflix. Everybody can get Netflix. Yep. Netflix Basic is $8.99. Of course, you can upgrade for the high def for um, $15.99. I didn't even know there was a high def. Does well, it make a difference? Uh, please. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, the HD, I think, also gives you the 4K option, I think, for more. I'm again, not sure which one again, I have. Again, you're talking about Ks. <sighs> okay. I mean, my name starts with a K, but and beyond that, unless okay, it's okay, gold. Okay, okay, we'll, okay. We'll move on. Hulu. Okay. Now, Hulu's got two different versions. Hulu's got one with ads and one without. The without is uh, 12 bucks a month. Okay. Then you got Amazon Prime. Um, it's $119 for the annual Prime membership. Um, or nine dollars a month, or something like that. If you want to do just monthly, Apple TV five bucks a month. I didn't know they even had one. I guess there's a new one now. They just came out with was Apple TV. Um, Disney Plus is the new one, and everybody loves it. I have it. I love it, and it is six dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Wow. Do you love that? Yeah, I do. Well, for all the stuff that Disney Plus actually has, it's actually probably the best deal of all these things on here that I've heard. Because Disney Plus is in, has like almost every Disney movie that you can ever think of and imagine. It's like on there. Marvel, Disney, everything. And I got to mention Star Wars 2 also on Disney Plus. Every Star Wars movie, I believe, is on there. And every single Star Wars cartoon and all the Star Wars related stuff, including that brand new show called The Mandalorian. And... I didn't even know there was a show. All I just know was I, I was on social media this week, and all of a sudden, these pictures and memes of Baby Yoda started to pop up everywhere. And I said to Chris this morning, oh my gosh, I know what we've got to talk about on the podcast this week. We have to talk about <laughs> Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Now, I don't know if it really is a Baby Yoda, Yoda per se, but I think it's a, um, it's a creature like Yoda. From but a baby version of right. that. Right, but think. all I saw was like these baby Yoda memes. I had no idea that I'll, this is a show on Disney Plus. And yeah. then Chris was like blowing my mind. He's like, "Oh yeah, babe, it's like what? What is that name word again?" Ma Mandalor it's called the Mandalorian. Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is the main character in the show, and he comes from I guess he is a Mandalorian. I think if I follow it correctly. Oh, like. Oh, being of Mandalorian. Maybe. I okay. didn't really gotten that far into okay. it, but I think that's what it is. So, so, that, so that's Disney, where Baby Yoda comes from, and right. that's why it's everybody a has the memes. In, yeah, it's a character in the new Disney, mo Disney I got show. It. Got it. So uh, that's Disney Plus for you in a nutshell. And that's only like seven bucks a month. Yeah, seven bucks a month, which you can buy all at one time for the year. However, if we're adding that on top of Netflix and all of these other things, it really starts to add up. Oh, yeah. It, it can get very expensive. And there's a big number on the end of this list. I'm going to okay. give it to you. Keep but, coming. Uh, now, here's some of those ones I have not heard of. It's called uh, QBI. It's called the Q. I have no idea. It said it launches in April. Oh, I don't know what this so one is. So it's not out yet. Yeah, it's probably like the rest of them. Here's another one. CBS All Access. It's six, $6 a month. Oh, and by the way, go back to that QBI. That was $5 a month. Uh, starting package. Uh, CBS All Access is $6 a month. Now, CBS is already on TV, but this CBS All Access has got special shows that you cannot find on television, like that this, new Star Trek show. This is crazy. It's like, it, I don't know. It reminds me of when we used to have like old fashioned TV, but imagine if for every one of those channels that you liked, like NBC, CBS, or PBS that you had to pay to watch it. Well, speaking of C uh, NBC, uh, Peacock is another one. I guess because of Peacock, little oh, symbol, yeah. NBC. Mm -hmm. um, that one looks like it's to be announced, the pricing, but it looks like it's probably going to be around 10 to 12 bucks. Wow. Okay, HBO has got one, right. obviously. Mm -hmm. $15 a month. What? Yeah, uh, HBO Max. It says it launches 2020. Huh. Uh, Showtime, $11 a month. Stars nine dollars a month, Cinemax, um, also as Hulu or Amazon at Prime as an add-on is ten dollars a month. Epics, they must be the movie channel. It is six dollars a month. Okay, I'm adding all these numbers up as quickly as I can in my head, and I'm already like <laughs> losing track and then getting overwhelmed, well, thinking, okay. "Do I want to put my kid through college or do I want to watch TV?" All right, well, yeah, you might have to do that. <laughs> um, now, if you like sports, ESPN Plus is five dollars a month 
But ESPN's already channel. They must they must have like every game or something. Maybe. I, I don't know. Five bucks a month. Or maybe because it's mobile. Maybe because you could take it with you. Oh, that could be it. Maybe yeah. you pay for that pretty mm-hmm. much. The WWE Network, if that's still a thing. Wrestling? Yeah, it really is. My son loves it. He's well, obsessed. Well, be ready to have him dish out $10 a month for no, that. No, 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 thank you. Fake okay, uh, the DC Universe is six dollars and twenty five cents a month. Do they even have enough content to like? You know, have I don't their know own channel. I don't know what it is. Is it cartoons or is it like movies? anime? It might be. I don't know. Um, BTE Plus has oh, a, yeah. has a one mm-hmm. ten dollars a month. Something called Acorn TV. It must be for the chipmunks. They must love this one. <laughs> it's five dollars a month. Uh, is it five dollars or acorns? I don't know. But um, here's one called Brit Box, and I wonder if Brit Box is for like the British, or maybe it's for the British shows. Maybe you can stream British shows like Downton Abbey and other types of things. Well, that's that, possible. Or like the Great British British Baking Show, but that's on Netflix. It's seven dollars a month oh, for that. Now track. here's one called Cry. Tyrion Channel it says movies. It's eleven dollars a month. I don't know what that is. I guess it just gets a bunch of movies, maybe. I don't know. Uh, These I'm starting to lose track. Mubai is one called Mubai. It says movies for eleven dollars a oh, month. Oh, movie. Movie. I'm sorry. M o o b i. No, it's just no. There's no. It's just M u b i. Oh, I like don't know. Mubai. See, I haven't even heard of these. Uh, yeah, it says it says movies, and it's um. Eleven dollars a month. Now here's one. I like the price on this one. It's called Canopy. It's spelled K A N O P Y. Okay. Canopy. It says movies, and the price is free. I can afford that one. Yeah, it just makes you wonder what kind of content's <laughs> oh, on there. Oh, there's a catch. <laughs> I'm sorry. It says with a public library card or university login. <laughs> Oh, I have that. We can oh, get that do? for free. Okay, yeah, well, cool. Yeah, university. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, Fendor, a oh, Fandor, I'm sorry. Fandor, it says movies. Okay, for... these are just starting to sound bizarre, Chris. I know. I'm not making these up, by the way. <laughs> it sounds like I am, but no, I'm not. Um, it says it's uh, $6 a month. Uh, Sundance Now. Now, I wonder if it's all like the new Sundance movies. Probably. Yeah, $7 a month. All right, um, so bottom line. After you get through all these, you have like two more pages to read. But instead of reading them all, just like hit us with them. Okay. PBS Passport. How much is it going to cost me? $5 a month. All of this. Wait, I thought PBS was free. (laughs) I think it's supposed to be like (laughs) the public television. That's what I thought it was. Yes, it is. But they have other things that I don't know. But $5 with other things, I guess. Overall, Chris, hit me with the bottom line. If I want everything on this list, because you know. We've got more to get through here. We've got two more pages of stuff to get through. I can't handle it. Yes, you can. We're almost done. I'm overwhelmed. Oh, you will be. Okay. History Vault. The History Vault sounds interesting. It's five bucks a month. The, here you go. Your favorite. The Hallmark Movies Now. Yes. I have that one. Well, how much is it? Do you know? Uh, um, $14.99. $5 a month. <laughs> <laughs> so, you must got ripped off. <laughs> you must have bought the wrong one. Maybe I should check my bank statement. Um, I think I only pay 5 bucks a month, but well, I don't says, even remember. It says an annual fee of like $60 a month. Maybe yeah. you're paying that. I don't know. I don't Bro- know. Broadway HD. It says theater. I wonder what that is. It's $9 a month. AMC Premiere. Oh, Five- I like AMC. I keep getting those ads because I'm an AMC Stubbs member. Okay. Like, I go to the AMC movie theaters because they have great deals on I Tuesdays. don't know. Is, is, that the, is AMC theaters the same as AMC, the, the yep. network? Yeah, because I keep getting the... Oh, wait, no. That's American Movie Classics. Oh, maybe. AMC Premiere, it's five bucks a month. Yeah. Um, That's here's... like with like the Lone Ranger and Desperado okay. and all of those types of things. Uh, Shudder, it says, one called Shudder. That it's sounds ho- scary. Yeah, it's horror from AMC Networks. It's another five bucks a month. B&R Live. Wait, hold on, pause. W- okay. So AMC has a channel and then you have they to have pay another... extra <laughs> to watch the scary stuff? So I guess. I don't you know. don't get to watch everything. You get to watch this set and then you have to pay us more to be scared? Dish another five bucks out a month. Yeah, to be freaked out? No. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, B, B-R Live Bleacher Report is 10 bucks a month. Oh, here's the one that everybody might be interested in. It is the NFL Sunday Ticket. 
Yeah, so I used to have that when I was in Fresno. It was an add-on to my cable package. Right. It so, so it says on here, it says it's twenty four fifty a month. Yeah. But if you want to pay for it, I guess it's uh, free with direct TV packages. Uh, saying only on certain types, right? Two hundred ninety-three dollars or two hundred ninety-five dollars, three hundred ninety-five dollars right. per season. Right. I remember we would shell out a big chunk of change to be able to have Sunday ticket. We did it two years. Oh wow! And then after that, I was like, heck no, Trader Joe. It's for like <laughs> eight weeks of the year. And then the response I got was, but we could like watch the training camps and like watch all of the film. And I was like. And no. <laughs> End of story. Well, if you like, uh, okay, if you like football, there's baseball has theirs too. It's also twenty five dollars a month yep. for the baseball one, and the NBA has one too. There's a little cheaper. It's only, it's only eighteen bucks a month. But add those all together. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars here, Chris. Yeah. Oh, and H. If you like hockey, I know everybody in Canada. They love their hockey up there in Canada. It's twenty five dollars a month for their for their version. Now. If you like soccer, Fox Soccer Match, and your Ezekiel does, he yeah. likes soccer, that's $20 a month right. to get the soccer match It's pass. expensive, and sometimes the matches you want to watch aren't even on those ones oh, because gosh. they're covered by different networks. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, you get to pay for those too, I guess. Yep. Uh, YouTube Premium. There's a YouTube. YouTube is free, but YouTube has a premium package. What does it give you? Um, well, I know YouTube had a TV package. I don't know if this is what they're talking about. But they had a TV service like Netflix, like Hulu. They were going to dish out their own YouTube platform of network. That's so crazy. And you got a few networks on there, TV channels and that stuff. It's going to cost you 12 bucks a month. I thought you couldn't have full length like movies and things like that on YouTube because oh, you of do. Like, licensing. Oh, oh, check this out. What? Um, every movie I purchased on my Google account, because Google owns YouTube. Uh -huh. If you log into my YouTube channel or my YouTube account... All my movies I purchased are available to watch through YouTube on what? the YouTube thing. This is blowing my mind right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Well, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> they get you with free Google Home and Google Suite products and then shank you with the YouTube premium. Well, here's another one called VRV Premium. I don't know what that is. It says niche streamers or something. I don't know. I don't but know. Anime site or something? Oh, uh, anime. Okay. Well, it's Nuff 10 said. 10 bucks a month. And then another one called Two Buy. It must be the competition to Moo Buy. It's and Two Buy. <laughs> it's Two Buy. And it's, oh, it's free. I can afford this one. It's free. Okay. I wonder what that's all about. Sony has one. It's called Sony Crackle. You've heard of this one? No. I've heard of the Crackle. I had the Crackle app on my tablet years ago. And it's got a very select, very select few um, channels to watch and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's free. It's cool. Ad supported, of course. And so far, your total, just for streaming alone. Okay. Your Let me total, guess. I think that we're going to be at $280 if I get it all. Just for streaming, you think? All uh, of everything. No. Uh, try a little more than that. It, it comes in a grand total of $353.43 per month. What? Just for the streaming services. Okay. But we're not going to get all of those things. Like, Oh, and by the way. What? To get those streaming services or to get any kind of streaming service, you need the internet. Right. And the internet usually costs at a basic cable package um, is around $50 a month. So that comes to a grand total of $448.41 per month. You're going to pay to watch something on television. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. That's like a, gr a household grocery budget for a family of five. That's a car payment. That is and think about it, you know. It's insane. Now, that's if you got everything on that list. Not everybody gets everything, but if you were to get everything, that's you'd pay. And I bet people probably just get the basic, the big ones, like the Netflix, the, the Disney Plus, mm -hmm. the Hulu. the um, Or then, like, maybe, like, one specialty thing. Like, I get the Hallmark now. Somebody else may choose, like, the anime channel. Or the sports one. Or right. the ESPN. Or the NFL. But still, we don't even have time to watch what we have. Why would people be spending all of this extra money? Do they really have that much time to sit around and watch things like this? I don't know. And I wonder with a lot of these, too, if there's a possibility to record a lot of this stuff. If stuff comes in live, I don't you know. tape it, record it. You know, speaking of recording stuff, <laughs> I look at my DVR the other day, yep. and I got stuff set from like different packages, different shows. Shows I used to watch. And um, yeah, it's like 
they're like seasons I haven't even watched <laughs> because I haven't even had a chance to. This you is know? so crazy. I think I need to like do an audit of all of the different streaming services that I have and really ask myself, how often am I using it? Is it really worth keeping? And then I have to ask the second question of, is this an, a year long subscription that I already paid for? Or is this a monthly that I can like cut loose and free up some money in my Honestly, budget? Honestly, if I was going to tell you something, if I always had to choose one, if you're going to choose one of them and get rid of all of them, all the all the streaming services. Don't just, make me choose one. If I had to pick one, I honestly, I'd probably would go with the Disney Plus. It seems like when I first heard about coming out, and I just saw all the stuff they were going to be releasing on it. Like all the major movies, all the Pixar, all the Star Wars, all the Disney stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just there's so much. And when you used to watch uh, Netflix a lot, they would have some Star Wars. They would have some... Um, Pixar, but it was like two or three out of the thousands of shows. It's not that much, mm -hmm. but you think about all the stuff they have. It just it's for seven bucks a month. I right. think that's cheaper than Netflix. That's cheaper than all of them. Well, I will keep Disney Plus because I, I got pay to for it, see yes, but I also <laughs> got to see firsthand Baby Yoda myself, and he's kind of cute. And I oh, want to see the what way, happens he, to he, him. Christmas is coming, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I just looked up and found out that Baby Yoda is actually a very hot. Stuff plush uh, Disney to uh, uh, Christmas toy. Buy for me. And they, uh, they, they like sold out. <laughs> Amazon doesn't have any more, and they they can't. They had like nine hundred thousand searches for it on Amazon the first week or whatever. Oh my gosh, it's like the tickle me Elmo of twenty nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder it's if they're gonna have it at the Disneyland like gift shops. Oh my gosh, they have to. Baby they have, Yoda. You know? Oh, so much. He's okay. So cute. All right. Well, I love talking about that. It's given me a new perspective on all things streaming. And all I have to say is thank you so much for buying us Disney Plus, And thank you so much for having cable so I can watch my Hallmark Christmas movies because now I don't have to pay for that at home. Oh, you're welcome. And you're, <laughs> you're all welcome. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back right after this with our next hot topic. The Chris and Christine Show is now on Instagram at the K2 Show San Diego. Check out our latest pictures, videos, show teasers, and life updates on Instagram at the K2 Show San Diego. All right, Chris, and now we are moving on to our second hot topic. Ooh, what you got today, baby? Give it to me, baby. All right, so this is something that's very timely for people, and it is our holiday tipping guide for 2019. Ooh, you mean like uh, the restaurant, leaving a tip kind of stuff? Haircut, well, maybe? It made me think about it from the restaurant. So Chris and I were getting ready to take the boys out tonight to a yummy Italian dinner, and I was thinking about tipping and thinking about how it's the holidays and how people must be really overworked when they're in restaurants specifically near like shopping centers and things like oh, that. Oh gosh, I can only imagine. Yeah. And so we were talking about that. And a couple of weeks ago, Chris and I were talking about how much do we tip at restaurants. And then I started to think about this holiday season and servers aren't the only ones that get tipped during the holiday yeah, season. Yeah, I think that like during the holidays in particular, um, it's like it's probably people are always in the giving mood. It's when probably – I think donations always seem to go up around the country. Um, tipping in general I think goes right. up around this time of year. Giving in general because it's the giving season. And, right. And that's what uh, it's all about. So um, what you got? Well, so when I was growing up, I remembered that my dad, he owned his own business. And so he wouldn't tip but he would give bonuses to his employees and I would sit like there with him. a Christmas bonus? A Christmas bonus. No like way. a cash kiss Christmas bonus. And oh, I remember okay, cool. sitting at home with him and watching him uh, count out the money and, and I'd help him put it into the envelopes and we'd gift it to the individuals at the party. And I'd ask him like, how do you decide who gets what bonus? And he had a formula for it. And so I said, well, should... Do other people get bonuses is it Chris, at Christmas? And he said, well, anybody that's doing some type of work for you or service for you, you should be gifting them. And so I was younger and I was like, what? And I've grown up with that. And I was like starting to think this holiday season, you know, I always try to do like homemade gifts, but I started to wonder what's actually supposed to happen for people that provide services like a housekeeper or a hairstylist. And Town & Country Magazine actually has 
an annual holiday tipping guide. Now, this is based kind of like, where do they get these numbers from? And tipping is kind of like, I feel like tipping is kind of like personal. So I think this kind of varies from person to person. It, it should be like not an exact science, right? Well, yes. And that's what that goes into this holiday tipping guide is there's suggestions and it's from a gal named Sharon Schweitzer. And actually, it's coming from the Emily Post Institute. Are you familiar with Emily Post? You know, I, yeah, of course. I mean, sure. <laughs> she, please. Oh, so yeah. Emily Post is like the guru for etiquette. Of course she is. She is. And oh, yeah. so these guidelines are from the Emily Post Institute and from Sarah Schweitzer, who is an etiquette that's Sarah. expert. Oh my goodness. She's a, she's a character. That's Sarah Schweister. She's always Schweistering stuff. Schweitzer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but she's an etiquette expert. So we're going to talk through just a couple of different things when it comes to tipping etiquette, especially as we're approaching the holidays. Here's a couple of things from the Emily Post Institute that they say are factors to consider before you actually give a tip for the holiday season. Now this goes for like any kind of service or well, what? I'll get into that. Okay, okay. But I want to just give you a little bit of guidelines. They say take into consideration the quality and frequency of the service you receive. Okay. Your relationship with the service provider. Huh. Your location, tipping averages. So if you're in a very high cost city, that tends to be a higher tipping rate. Oh. Also, the number of years you've been using the service and most important also goes into this factor is your budget. They say you should well, never... yeah, if you're broke, you can't tip. What right. You, do? you should never feel obligated to go beyond what you can reasonably afford. However, another thing to consider is that if your budget does not allow for tips, consider heartfelt homemade gifts that others Ooh, will value. Like baking cookies and stuff? Yeah, things like that. So any the other thing that they say is any tip should also be accompanied with some type of a handwritten note so you're not just handing cash as if it's like a or regular a tip at a card. restaurant. <laughs> right, but it's a thank you so much. And so we're going to get into some of the categories okay, of okay. who would get tipped. Oh, like me, right? <laughs> you get tipped by my presence by oh, having a fabulous okay, okay, day okay. every day. <laughs> okay. All right. So domestic help. Anytime a type of uh, individual that's in the household, such as a cook, a nanny, a personal caregiver, or a butler, depending on their frequency, it could be between a week to a month's pay plus a gift. Really? That's if they're full-time domestic wait, wait. help. Full-time. So, for example, if you had a full-time nanny living in your house. Oh, living your house. And taking care of your kids. Okay. Then, typically, you would give them between a week to a month's pay plus a gift. No way, man. Yep. No way. Absolutely. That's too expensive. No. That's like 5,000% or something. Okay. Your numbers are off. but no, they're not. <laughs> I'm a math mathematician, Mr. <laughs> Mr. The whiz kid. You All know right, what I'm math whiz. Yes. But typically, so the general guideline is whatever amount of time, if you, you give them a fraction of that. So if they work for you five days a week, then tip them the equivalent of one week. So five days of pay as a, a bonus, as a tip. Okay. All right. Well, so whatever. you could think of it like a bonus too. Okay. 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 Well, okay. All right. For a housekeeper, if they come once a week, then the equivalent of a day's pay or $50, whichever you okay. feel most comfortable with. So 50 okay. bucks. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. A barber or a hairdresser. Okay. Up, up to the cost of one haircut or a gift. I don't do that. But, um, okay. I, I tip normal. I don't like, that's like, that's like the price of a haircut. What? Okay. But that's different. You go to Supercuts and you get I'm a super, different person I'm every Superman, time. That's why. Right. You go to Supercuts, you have a different person every time. I go to a hairstylist who I've been loyal to for three years. She and I see each oh, other. Oh, and by the way, shout out to my ladies at Supercuts. What's up? <laughs> How are you doing? Shout out to my girl, Joanna, <laughs> who keeps my hair looking on point. But I go to see her every four to six weeks. And you specifically request her, right? No, like she's my person. Oh, she comes to you? No, I go to her, oh. to her state, her place, her right, chair. Right. She works with a number of others, but she's the only one I go to. I pre-schedule. And so the tipping guide would be that I would either tip her the amount of a session 
or give her a gift. I typically do a gift. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, so babysitter, if they are a regular babysitter for you, then up to one evening's pay and a small gift from your children. Yeah, okay, that's kind of cute. I love that. I love that idea about the whole kids getting involved and kind of like saying, mm-hmm. thank you for watching us. Yeah, oh. so think about it. Like if you have a regular sitter, maybe they're coming over once a week or a couple nights a week, then a Christmas tip for them would be one night you would double that and give them a gift from the kids. Okay, cool. Right? So it's reasonable. I like it. I like that idea. This is the one that I didn't know of, and I can honestly say I never did, and now I'm feeling super guilty, is a daycare provider. It says $25 to $70 for each staff member who works with your children and a small gift from your children. Wow. What do you think? Just like throwing Benjamins out the window or what? Well, I just remember when I needed daycare, I was paying a lot of money, and I always did provide a very nice gift, but I didn't tip. Uh, well, you know what? It's not like they, you know, Maybe they hate bad. me. Yeah, well, they're getting paid, right? <laughs> so, I mean, but then all of these people are, but they're in a service industry, so I think it's just a sign of of care and of respect, but. The next one is a personal trainer. Give them up to the cost of one session or a gift. Okay, sure. Yeah. I mean, but honestly, all these lists you just came up with, I bet you of all the, see, personal trainer has how many people he's uh, working with. Mm -hmm. Of all those people, how many people do you think are physically giving them a full uh, training session? I don't know. Maybe just a gift. As a gift. How many do you think are actually doing Maybe they're giving a gift instead. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Maybe 10%. Of the people they train. So Maybe. like if trains 10 people, so one person actually does this. Right. Okay. Okay. So the next one, I do have a comment on this one. So a newspaper delivery person between 10 to $30 what? Or, or a small gift. What did you just say? Right. A new, a, a, what did you, a, a Your newspaper? newspaper delivery person. What's that? Okay. So growing up in small town, California, a bunch of my friends in high school had paper routes. They would bike around town mm-hmm, and they mm-hmm. still do. And they throw the paper every morning. The paper? Huh? Yeah. Like the old school. It was the Fresno Bee. No. The, what, the Fresno what? <laughs> <laughs> the Fresno, the Fresno Bee. Fresno, the Fresno what? The little like, like bumblebee. Oh, they said the Fresno Bean. <laughs> <laughs> bee. Okay. Buzz, buzz. So my friends would throw the bee. Oh, and okay. so. <laughs> okay. They would bike around, but at the holidays, they'd be going to collect for their subscriptions. And I remember my high school friends would be like getting ready for winter formal or whatever. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, I should be able to get that after I go collect. And I was like, what? Well, all of their people that they would toss the paper for would tip them like five, okay. ten, fifteen dollars okay. okay. And they would consistently get that. And they would have like 50 to 60 houses on their route. Okay, I got So you. imagine All right. 5 to 20 to 30 dollars. Right. Right. As a high school kid. So I guess people I guess people in the uh, service in- industry must really love the holidays. Well, I think a lot of them count on it for being able to provide for their own lifestyle. You know, people budget right. around that. And so when they don't get I mean, typically Depending on what occupation they're in, like a gardener, their business slows down during the holiday season because grass isn't growing as much. I mean, maybe leaves are falling, Mm -hmm. but that tipping, that gratuity actually helps them make ends meet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I follow you now. All right. Now, here's another one that you might not have considered, and this is mail carriers, all right? Because we don't just have regular mail carriers. We have U.S. Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, and Amazon. And okay. have you seen Amazon in the news lately about people gifting Amazon delivery people? Yeah, I saw it on Instagram, I think. People are actually leaving little notes by the front door. It says, Amazon delivery dude, um, if you get this package or whatever, dance in front of my camera for me or something. <laughs> I know. saw another one where a lady was leaving a basket of goodies and it said, thank you for our, all of your hard work this season. Please take some of these goodies. But you know what? Those Amazon drivers are not the same one every day. Right. It's, it rotates. It's, exactly. you know, it's all random. So who knows? Right. But if you're a business and maybe you have the same U.S. Postal Service delivery person, here's what the U.S. Postal Service says okay. their employees can and cannot accept in terms of tips. Hmm. So they may accept baked goods, homemade, store-bought, 
the something that can be shared with the branch office. They can, <laughs> their boss. Yeah, their they boss can be can given edible arrangements and gift cards for merchandise or services valued up to twenty dollars per interaction, but they cannot have gifts that exceed fifty dollars per calendar year, and you cannot give cash. Visa or MasterCard gift cards or anything that could be used as cash. Huh. That's weird. Right. All those constraints. Well, uh, be on the safe side and just don't give them nothing. Aw, <laughs> don't say that. Uh, give, UPS. Give them, you know you should give them? Give them a nice hearty handshake and a thank you. Good job. <laughs> You're such a brat. <laughs> UPS does not have a limit and tipping is left to the customer's discretion. Mm-hmm. FedEx policy, their company policy discourages gift cards, cash, gift cards or cash. And what they said is the driver will politely decline the holiday holiday gratuity. But if the customer is insistent, the driver may ultimately accept. Well, yeah, I'm going to slip this 20 in my pocket and we'll (laughs) pretend this didn't happen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Now there's a number of other categories, but the last one that I did want to talk about is teachers. And so here they recommend considering a group, a group gift with parents where you pull funds Pull funds. Pull funds, oh, like oh, pool funds. Okay, like a bunch of parents get together. Right, because here's the deal. If you have an elementary school child, that teacher has up to 35 children mm-hmm. who all bring in little baked goodies and things right. like Apples. that, which is very, <laughs> very sweet. But as an educator, uh, sometimes those things, like I couldn't eat them. Sometimes they had nuts or whatever. Mm-hmm. And what I always loved were things that I could use for me personally. I loved to get like a $5 Starbucks gift card or like a pack of highlighters or yeah, gift cards are a good like idea that. because those are like fresh, you know, food that's not going to go bad. Right. And and Starbucks, I don't care who you are, anybody can use a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> right. You know. But I also know that for so many of my students when I was a classroom teacher that I knew that they were on a really tight budget. So the thing that was the most meaningful to me was a handwritten note. And I keep a lot of those. I still <gasps> have them. No way. You should like frame them or something. I do have a couple of them. Like I have like, blow a picture um, up and like do like a frame with like the note below it or something. But anything that like had a story to it. So if a student came to me and said like, oh, I found this for you or I picked this at my grandmother's house and it was like a beautiful flower. It's really more about the thought than yes. about like the physical, having anything. whatever. Right. Right. And yeah. I think that's pretty standard for any teacher. Nobody counts on getting like a ton of stuff or getting rich from any gifts from kiddos. More than anything, they just appreciate knowing that the families understand how much time that they pour into it's the like lives of their kids. It's like my kids too when they buy me stuff for Christmas and stuff. They have this like at their school they do this like mm-hmm. um Santa's workshop thing. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what it's called, Santa's workshop. It's like a little store and they give the you send the kids in with like five, ten bucks, right. maybe twenty bucks. You send them in there and they have a bunch of little trinkets and little mm-hmm. knickknacks and they're nothing fancy or flashy, but it's just little thoughtful little gifts, like small stuff. Right. And they bring stuff back, you know, whatever it is, a bookmark or mm-hmm. a book or something. And it's kind of cute, you know, and all that. And um, it's not a big trinket, but I love the thought and the actual appreciation that goes into when they actually buy that stuff. And my right. son Jacob is so proud of that. He loves doing that. He does. He, he tells me all about it, how this is coming up soon. I can buy stuff for this, for this person or that person and all that. And he really gets excited at picking out the right perfect gift for that right per- perfect person and putting a lot of thought into it. And that's one of the things that we really try to instill into our kiddos as they're growing up is especially during the holiday season to be aware of the people around us and to show appreciation for them in whatever way we can. It doesn't always have to be monetary. So friends, if money is tight and you aren't able to put out funds to tip people, you are more than welcome to put together some type of heartfelt gift or a really heartfelt handwritten note to let somebody know what they're doing to help improve and enhance your life. Everybody loves to know that they're needed and appreciated. Amen, sister. That is well said. I really appreciate it. And And everybody does too. On that note, Chris, I'm going to transition us and I'm going to hop us right into... (laughs) What we got? Our our would you rather is connected to this. So my question for you, Chris, after talking about that, is for you as an individual, 
for the people in your life, would you rather tip them or provide a homemade gift? It depends on where I'm at and what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It all depends on how busy I am, too. If I had a lot of... If, if I was, say, like in a, um, a, a, I don't know, hobby or a project, if I was doing something, not work-related, but something I did for fun, mm-hmm. like, say, knitting or um, wood carving or something right. like that, that was, like, my hobby or whatever, I would make a, a special thing right. for them. But if I didn't do a lot of that kind of stuff and I was always busy all the go, go, go... I probably cash probably the easier thing mm-hmm. to do, or, or maybe gift cards or things like that than cash. I think gift cards are a little better than cash. I think a cash is like such a cut a cop out. Right. You know, people say the same thing about gift cards, but I think not because the gift cards you really have to. I'm talking about like the ones that are store specific, mm-hmm. not the cash gift cards or what are they called? Credit card right, gift cards. Right, right, right. I'm talking about the ones for the specific store or restaurant ones. Right. Those ones. Um, you give them to somebody and you know they like this restaurant or they right. like the store mm-hmm. and they will actually use that. And it doesn't just – it's not cash or blow on whatever or give it somebody or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I could do that. But if I was doing a hobby or something and I was into doing crafting, I probably would do that instead. Yeah. I, I like to opt for the homemade gifts. I'm – Always trying to be aware, though, that as I'm making something, like, is this something that will actually be appreciated or am I just making it for me? And so this year, um, I do provide gifts for all of our classified support staff. It's not a tip per se, but it's a staff gift. And I try to think of something that'll bring a little bit of joy that's not just Christmas specific. Uh, But I do like to make at least some of my gifts that I give to the individuals in my life. But for people like, um, there's some people that provide some services for me in my home. I know that money is what they need most during the holiday season. So I make sure to add just a little bit extra because I know that's really what they need to be able to meet the needs of their family. And so like you, I think that it depends. I tend to opt for the homemade gifts, but there's a couple that I just do the cold hard cash <laughs> oh well it's fantastic and the holidays are right around the corner happy holidays everyone everybody by the way yeah you know and we have a couple of more great shows coming up for you before christmas so stay tuned with us and you definitely definitely don't want to stop listening in the next couple of weeks we appreciate you so much we appreciate all that you've done to enhance our lives and so We aren't able to tip you, but what we do give to you every week is great content. We try to, (laughs) and here we are. Here we are. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for listening and sticking with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I can't say thank you enough. Yeah, and we're just overwhelmed with the support, and we can't wait to be back with you next week for episode 17. Episode 17 is coming next week, and we'll see you guys then. Have a good week, everybody. Remember this week that life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right, forget about the ones who don't, and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said that it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward.